Gentlemen, what a time to be alive. Welcome to Constructing the Beast. I am your host, Darius Riddick, a.k.a. Riddick the Lion, a.k.a. Mr. Handsome, a.k.a. D-Money, a.k.a. Getting It Done 24-7. If this is your first time tuning in to this podcast, thank you so much and welcome to the family. For those of you that are unaware what Constructing the Beast is about, This is a podcast dedicated to mental health, personal development, and overall domination in every single aspect of your life. As always, ladies and gentlemen, I ask one thing, and it's most important, that if you find some value in this podcast, which in all ways of every episode, I hope that you do, that you pass it on to someone you care about or someone that you feel would find some sort of benefit in the podcast itself And, you know, just be a friend. Help them out because ultimately, as we say every single episode, the goal here is, say it with me, a more dominant, ass-kicking society. Again, as you already have seen, today's topic is going to be about laying the proper foundation to your beast. And we got to put an emphasis on that word, proper for a multitude of reasons and oh trust me we're gonna get into them today right here right now so first things first ladies and gentlemen as we're getting started i just want to put it out there again i'm not an expert in anything you know and i don't claim to know everything but what i do know i know very very well and today i'm gonna give you something that i think will benefit you and your kids and everyone that surrounds themselves with your aura, with your passion for years and years and years to come. Again, so everything we do here is conceptual, but I want you to try to envision in your mind what we're trying to picture here, okay? So let's start off with an area that you're going to construct your beast, okay? What do you see? The answer should be nothing <laughs> because there's nothing built there because what we're doing, what we're how we're starting off is we're building that foundation. So the common misconception that a lot of people have whenever they're starting anything, whether that be fitness, finances, uh, when it comes to health or a business or anything you're doing in general for that matter, no matter what the size of the project is, the common misconception is this. If you do something and you have to take steps back or you get pushed back more than where you started, you are failing or you are doing something wrong. That is absolutely 110% incorrect. Ladies and gentlemen, this is one myth that we are going to completely take out of the game right now and let me tell you why. Now, let's think back for a second to that area, that construction site where your beast is going to be erected. What's there? We already established that there's nothing there. So the first thing you have to do when layering that foundation is what? You are going to dig deeper than where the top layer of that ground already is. So from where you started, you are going to go further and further down. Now, let me put this in a better perspective for you. The larger you are going to build your beast, the bigger dream you have, the deeper, the more deeply rooted foundation you need to have. So whether you plan on building, metaphorically speaking here, say like an Eiffel Tower or a bridge or a small townhouse, anything for that matter, the dream that you have is going to start based on how deeply rooted and how greatly constructed your foundation is. Now, what does that mean for our starting point? So basically what that means for our starting point is where you started from the ground level of that foundation, whenever you get to the point of how deeply rooted you want your foundation to be or where you think it should be, that point may be so far from the surface of where you started that many times you look back and you'll think 
I'm not quite sure I'm going down the right path. I'm not sure that I'm doing this right. Maybe I've gone too far. You know, maybe this isn't for me. I, no. And most of those thoughts are completely normal. Trust me, the people that you follow, that you look up to, your idols, mentors, the millionaires, the 1%, everyone has those thoughts. That's part of being human. It is 100% normal. Don't get down on yourself for this. However, when you do have these thoughts and these thoughts begin to manifest, you have to have that mental fortitude, that mental deviation to be able to tell yourself where I started at that ground level is not where I'll end up that will ultimately get my beast constructed because I have to build my foundation. And when you are building this foundation, it is based off how big of a dream, how large scale you want that beast to be. Because if you're building something really huge, you can't have just a subtle, you know, three or four or five inch construction foundation. It has to be something that's greatly, deeply rooted, that's immovable, that doesn't matter what storm or whatever natural disaster comes your way. That foundation will always be in place. And ladies and gentlemen, this may seem like a new concept to some of you and others of you will see that. I mean, it all makes sense, but there's a couple things out there. They're floating around every single day. You may see them or hear them, or you've made have even experienced them, but you don't really realize it until it's put into perspective. For example, I'm going to go ahead and cover the two main aspects of life that a lot of people either struggle with, or it's the part of lives that they want to be the most successful in. And that's fitness and finances. For the sake of interest, we'll start with fitness. And ladies and gentlemen, like I stated before, and I will state again, I do not claim to know everything, but the things that I do know, I know very, very well. So as being a master personal trainer, having you know seen over hundreds of clients, being an MPC bodybuilding pro, a world champion power lifter with four world records, and ultimately having over 20 years of weightlifting, sports, bodybuilding, and just athletic experience, I know for a fact the quickest way to take you out of the game when it comes to your goals and what you want to achieve is stopping or quitting when something does not go your way. The first time I really experienced this concept and when it came to light to me is whenever I first started training my first maybe 15 or 20 clients and the methods that I had put hours and hours and blood, sweat and tears and everything you can imagine into didn't work. The clients that were coming to me with my specialized plan, my top notch world class plan were getting more out of shape. They were gaining more weight. They were getting slower or their bones and joints were hurting. And let me tell you, whenever you put lots and lots of effort into something and it fails, it's probably one of the worst feelings that you can imagine. But that was younger, more juvenile me. And back then, there were plenty of times where I wanted to quit. But what it really comes down to is taking a step back and evaluating exactly where the trouble is coming from. But now... Ladies and gentlemen, today I'm here to present to, to, to you what the real aspect to this whole game is and what it is that will make you the most successful when it comes to fitness. Whether you want to be a bodybuilder or you want to be you know, a power lifter or you just want to be healthy or you want to be fit or you want to get abs or you want to get a nice juicy booty or you want to get some thick screaming baby cows. That's calves for those of you that didn't catch it anyways. Or you want to get any any aspect of your body that you want to increase this is the concept that's going to break that plateau and change the way you think about what you are doing when you start a new concept so if you are a weightlifter and you're going into cardio if you're a crossfitter and you're going into olympic lifting if you are simply yoga in slim fit techniques and you're trying to move more into the gymnastics or weightlifting principles, whenever you start something new, 
your body is going to regress. And let me tell you why. The human body is hands down the most amazing machine on God's green earth. Whenever it is introduced to a certain amount of stimuli, it is going to adapt. And during that adaptation period, the body breaks down and recovers. But when it does recover, it comes back bigger, stronger, and faster. And this is the principle, baseline principle, very basic, very basic, basic, basic version that will cover even more in a different episode. But this is the basic principle that the body goes into whenever you switch to something new. Now, let me relate this to you in the same way that we're talking about our beast, that baseline foundation. If you are someone that's starting out, that you, you're like a level one lifter, so you don't really know that much about weightlifting, nutrition's pretty new to you, you don't know about macro and micro nutrients. Whenever you start that baseline, you have that open field to begin your construction. You are going to introduce new things to your body that it does not understand. So you are going to have to dig deeper from where you started and build that foundation. And it's going to seem like you're going back. You may gain a little bit more water weight. You may Your joints may hurt a little bit more. Or your body may look a little bit different than it usually does. And it won't be in a good way. But that is key. That is the principle because eventually your body is going to see that foundation and it's going to be able to adapt to the stimuli that you're introducing to it. So in turn, instead of starting from the surface and not having a very stable foundation built, you'll have the best foundation possible. And once that foundation is finished, that's when the real construction begins. And I know because I get this all the time. I've been doing this for a long time and I have trainers come to me now wanting advice and they ask me why their clients have started their new program and it seems like they're gaining weight or it seems like they're not where they should be. And I mean, that could be one of two things. One, sorry, brother, but they're not really following your plan. Or two, it's actually because their body is going through that adaptation period. And what it's doing is it's laying that natural foundation. So in the end, it has something to build upon. And when it's to that top, when it's at the top level of that penthouse that your body's going to look like, because, man, you stick in there and you're going to look real good naked, sexy, it's going to be all worth it. The best advice I have there when in the aspects of fitness, whenever you're starting a new plan or taking on something new, is be patient. Learn your body. Learn what works for you. Capitalize on that. Learn your weaknesses, fix them, turn them into strengths, capitalize on those, and become an efficient, sexy, fit force. So next I'm going to address something that I know that everyone loves. And if someone out there says that they don't love it, then I don't know. I'm watching you. But that's money and finances. And I know we probably all heard this phrase before, but if you have not, I'm going to go ahead and say it for you right now. This goes out to everyone who wants to be wealthy, rich, um, who wants to start their own business or has their own business or wants to sell something or buy something or invest. And that is this. You have to spend money in order to make money. Now, before we go into this, um, one thing I want you guys to think about and something that is really, really important in that you should take away from this and think about it every time you want to spend money or you're feeling down about your finances. Think about this. How far are you willing to go in order to make that money that you can actually see in your future? Let me explain. So one of my friends and probably one of my biggest mentors is Andy Frazella. And if you haven't heard of him, go check out his podcast, The MF CEO Project, and just just do a little bit of research on him. If you go back to some of his early days, he talks about how he was $60,000 in debt and how he had to sleep on his couch and broke for about 10 years. 
And if you put that into perspective, some of us now don't have the money that we see down the road and that makes us down. Now, can you imagine your dream being so far away and being $60,000 in debt, broke, no money, po. This is just a short concept and just all wrapped up into one. But if you guys want to know more information about that, go check out Andy Frisella. <clears throat> and this, but this is the concept that I want to present to you guys because if you really want to be wealthy, you want to be a millionaire, you want to be a billionaire, you have to ask yourself how far you're willing to go. How much money do you want to invest? How broke can you be before you say, no, no, man, that no more. No mas, that, this ain't for me no more. How much are you willing to invest? Because smart people invest first and spend whatever is left. Now, unwise people, I don't want to say dumb, but unintellectual people will spend money first and then invest what's left. And he does a really good concept about putting this into perspective. Long story short is this. Two people are investing money. They both have $100. Person one goes out, goes drinking with the friends, spends $60 on drinks and other shit that really doesn't have any investment practice to it whatsoever. Has $40 left over to invest. Person two doesn't go out and invest all $100 into that into that concept or that aspect, whatever they're going for. <clears throat> so at the end of the day, person one invests $40. Person two invests $100. And every single day, person one and person two invest the same amount of money. Now, at the end of, say, one, two, three, four, five years, however long you want to look at it, person two it's ultimately going to have more there, more money in the long run and more investment practice because they spent more money into their investment. So they're going to have 100% investment, 100% return versus someone who went out drinking and spending money on things that had no return to it. Now, I'm not in any way saying that you shouldn't go out and have a good time. If that's something that you want to do, then that's something that you want to do. But like I said before, ladies and gentlemen, you have to understand if you want to be someone of great influence, if you want to be wealthy, if you want to be successful, it is going to come at a price. So you can go out every weekend, every night and have a good time. But if you want to be your own boss and don't want to have to work for anyone, 40 years down the road, then do something your future self will thank you for and invest that time and invest that money. And eventually you will have friends that surround you that are as like minded, as wise and as wealthy as you are. And you won't have to worry about going out and drinking because the investment will have been in your entire life, not just into your bank account. So the last part of finances that I'm going to hit here is whenever you are starting something new or investing money into a business, understand it is just that, an investment. So if you start off with $10,000 and you invest all of it, you may have to constantly invest money into it. So one year, there's 10000 invested. Then the next year, there's 20000 invested. Then the third year... You have a total of $30,000 invested into your faith, into your business. <clears throat> In the fourth year, you only make $5,000. So that's $25,000 that you invested into something where you didn't get the same return. The biggest way to psych yourself out from reaching that financial success point is telling yourself that it's not worth it. The return when it comes to money, is not going to be immediate in any sort of form or fashion. 
This concept, again, ladies and gentlemen, goes back into what we are doing here. Whenever you start with that baseline foundation, where your construction site is going to be, there is nothing there. When you start your foundation and dig into the ground, it's expensive. There's so many people you have to pay, so much digging you have to do. You have to buy the tools and materials, lay it all down. And the building that you're doing hasn't even come up yet. So whatever it's going to be, whatever aspect of uh, life it's going to be in, it hasn't made any money. But yet you're still investing more and more money into something that's still a project. But that's OK. That's the beauty of investment. It's invested into something that is going to have return in the long run. You just have to continuously put your faith into it, put your time and effort into it and always look back and see where you came from because when you do you're going to realize how awesome the journey is getting to this point building your beast laying your foundation and every single step you take you're going to look back at all the hard days and realize it was so worth it and the feeling is glorious